All right, our next two speakers are Sebastian Lorquet and Tom Brele, and they're going to um, uh, talk about Electrolab. Can you listen to me? Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say that Jordi could not join us. He's very sorry for that, but he's too busy with his studies, so he couldn't. Uh, he's telling hello to you. <laughs> Next, I want to thank uh, the EHSM committee for inviting us and letting us explain uh, what we are doing at the Electrolab Hyperspace and in particular this uh, wonderful project of metal matching at the Electrolab. So this talk we will be about uh, the evolution of the Electrolab uh, Hyperspace near Paris in France. And then we will talk to you about molten metal and some of the furnaces we've been building, and some of the results we've been obtaining with these uh, furnaces. Um, I want to tell you that this is a work in progress. The Electrolab is working as a hackerspace, and we are doing a lot of open source projects, and open source is, of course, about releasing often and early. So uh, what you will see is by no way complete, and even if it looks a bit messy, uh, don't be afraid, uh, <laughs> this is just the beginning. So the Electrolab is a hackerspace in Paris, as I said. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, some people were here to present a very nice vacuum chamber they have been building by themselves, uh, starting from a garage to a hackerspace. And at the same time, uh, every member of this hackerspace has a very big project, which is building the hackerspace because we are doing everything by ourselves, and um, there is a lot of manpower in this project, and uh, we are very proud of uh, building everything with our uh, wishes. Now, uh, the original 100 square meter hangar space is complete. Uh, we are working in a very cool lab, and that was only version one because we have too many members. Uh, this project has been a success, so we have more than 100 hackers uh, using the lab uh, every week, and we make a lot of stuff, <laughs> so there is no room for everyone. Uh, by luck, by chance, uh, we were only using a fraction of the space available uh, at our place, um, so after a lot of negotiation, we are now able to use the full space, which is 1,000 square meter and more. So we spend a lot of uh, time in the weekends, and not only in the weekends, to clean, build, break, uh, move stuff around, and organize a place like, like we want it. So don't worry, this is very complex, but I won't go on, on every point. Um, here in gray, we have Electrolab version 1. Okay? Uh, so it's full of stuff, and <laughs> we have no room around. So, uh, this is a full Electrolab version 2. Uh, the center of this place is here a public zone accessible to everyone. Uh, every visitor can come to us and we'll see uh, all we are doing in this place from the convivial zone, the central part here. And the second important place is the project zone here. It will be a very big open space where you can uh, build your projects. And around all of these are a lot of rooms uh, with specific purposes, like here, a white room, a PCB making room, uh, a mechanical zone with a very big machine for milling, turning, and we have a, uh, a CNC lathe, a CNC milling center, and we had a lot of chance to gather everything uh, when it was going to the trash, and we will build it again, repair it, and make it available to our members. So, as you can see, we are very oriented about around the fabrication, the making of uh, concrete things, concrete, uh, real things. Uh, there is a workshop zone, uh, sorry, here. This is the workshop zone. This zone is already made and ready for use. It's a temporary project zone, as you can see here. Here, is, with this single zone, we doubled the surface of our laboratory. So you can see we have a lot of place to make projects and put more stuff. And here is the new space that we got a few weeks ago, and that will be the core project zone. Uh, this is very raw for the moment, 
but uh, in the few weeks, uh, you will be uh, will see a lot of people in this place to build uh, their projects. And of course, all of this isn't free, but uh, we are trying to start a crowdfunding campaign to build our laboratory. Um, so we have a very important web page on our website, beside the wiki. This is a donate page where you can help us build this lab. And it could be your lab if you are in Paris once. So what do we do with all this stuff? Uh, well, the Electrolab is very, very wide, so a lot of people are coming in our world. So uh, we can do everything from electronics to chemistry to mechanics to robotics. Uh, for example, we had uh, a few teams at the French Robotic Web Cup, which is um, quite hard to make it work correctly, and we got a very good position in the full, uh, uh, in the full teams. Um, with all this stuff, we also make more stuff. So, as I said, we are very building oriented and we like creating with our hands and mechanics and very real things. So, we have a lot of ways to do this. We can 3D print, but this is very classic now. Uh, we have a full uh, meeting center, uh, not only CNC, so you can learn by yourself how to cut metal in parts and how things are done. And of course, we also have a machine shop with standard technologies such as plasma catching or soldering, or, and the TIG soldering is also available. And now, uh, we don't think this is enough, so we want to melt, melt metal uh, to create more parts. We also, casting is very useful to create metallic parts, where 3D printing uh, is at the limit because uh, it can well, there are metal 3D printers, but it's not very usable in the hacker space. Uh, so 3D printing is for plastic, and we want to extend this to metal through casting. You will see that later. But uh, we, lo we love machining, and machining needs metal blocks, uh, which are piece of metal, so you can cut them. And uh, metal melting can also be used to create such metal parts before cutting them. Well, we can also uh, envision a lot of experiments uh, the, at a more, more fundamental level uh, with material science studies of metal crystallization to characterize the quality uh, of the metal we melt. And moreover, it's very interesting because it allows us to recycle a lot of old metal and also oil. <laughs> but we are hackers, so we like to reuse things and use them as they are not proposed. And we want this process to be very easy to use. So uh, we, as a requirement, uh, require to, find, to use only easy to find components, at, if possible. And more importantly, this melting metal isn't only an experiment. It's a method, a building method. We want to make it available to all of our members. So we, this means uh, this project has to be used by every member. This is, we want to make it simple. Of course, you need a training. So this is how everything started. This is a very small furnace, uh, 400 watts. We had this lying around, and no one was using it. And one of a uh, day, Jordi said, hey, but this is very cool, this is a furnace, we can melt metal with this. And everything started. The same evening, we made a small blob of molten metal, but it's a nice, it's a nice small project, but not very far-reaching. Some more tests were done, and here the serious stuff starts. Um, this furnace is not very powerful, so we had to wait much longer, but we were able to, sm to melt a small quantity of aluminium, so it's real, really hot. And we made our first Hello world, and you see it's reversed because we forgot that the mold would be uh, inverted. But it's obvious that we need more power to melt bigger parts of metal because this small furnace uh, required as long as one half an hour to melt uh, this very small metal piece. Uh, so Jordi, which is also very, very important people in this project, even if he's not here, 
and started to gather very easy to find parts uh, like scrap. And with um, <coughs> a clear idea in mind, he gathered very common parts. We were very cheap and fragile. Uh, and we were able to make metal with charcoal, like this. So there are no sausages, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is the furnace. Very small here. You can see it's made of refractory bricks. Uh, there is only a single wire of metal binding this together. And the support here is very small. And there is only a plastic fan. Uh, pushing uh, as most hair as possible inside uh, the combustion chamber here. So you can see here the charcoal parts. This is very chambered wood charcoal. And even if it looks very basic and very simple, uh, we were able to reach very high temperature. Uh, the aluminum melts at 700 degrees, so it's not very high, but seriously high, however. And this is an example of uh, what we got after uh, this step. Uh, this is basic sand, and we make just a uh, small part. So, as I said, this is a work in progress. So of course, we made a lot of improvements over there. Uh, we tried to insulate uh, the, for, uh, the, the furnace as best as we could, using clay, bentonite clay, which is just dust. Mm -hmm very easy to use, and we try to improve on the blower to blow more air and more gas inside this furnace, because uh, charcoal is not very convenient. It's dirty, it's not very efficient, and it consumes a lot of charcoal because of the forced air. When the air is forced, uh, the barbecue uh, becomes uh, a molten metal heater. So here it is. You can see the same structure, but uh, here the clay is insulating everything, and here is a blower. It's a, a torch which is used in a building um, construction uh, to, to heat some, some parts, I don't know exactly. Um, so we added holes in with the goal of increasing the amount of air blown into the furnace. But it was a miserable failure, and here you can see uh, only a very small blue uh, flame, which is not hot, but it's blue because the whole furnace is just full of gas, and there is no air inside, so nothing can burn. This is what happens when you just remove the torch a few centimeters to allow air to be sucked into this hole. This is a <laughs> world of difference. So um, this, is, this was a, a requirement. We need as, uh, as more air as possible to make things very hot. So here's the um, thing you <laughs> saw in our demonstration outside. This is a hairdryer. It's very simple, very cheap. And this is the first part we had in mind when we wanted to, to add more air into our system. So um, the hairdryer here is just blowing air into a tin can, where the gas torch uh, also injects some gas. And as soon as this one melted, uh, we got a bigger one because members said, OK, stop with this. I, I bring you a serious thing. Uh, but uh, a lot of duct tape uh, helps a lot. And this is a very compact flame inside the furnace. It is very important to tell that the flame stays inside the furnace because that's where we run it, not outside. So after this step, um, the um, refractory bricks were so heated that uh, they were falling apart in pieces. They were made of compressed mica. Uh, they insulate very well, but they are quite fragile. Uh, so we had to throw this away and try something else. So uh, we molded a very big part of clay with a fire extinguisher inside and a sheet metal outside. And we will use the heating system to create a more robust um, parts. Here it is, Franken 4. This is sheet metal. Inside there is a lot of concrete, mortar, and uh, refractory uh, wool. Uh, there is an opening on the top where we can put our crucible. This is um, more convenient, more usable. Uh, still fragile, since uh, the clay and mortar will fall together after a long time. 
But now we are ready for molting because this machine is strong enough to mold, to, to melt not only aluminum, but also brass and copper. So now we need metal supplies because it's very cool to melt metals, but once in molten and put into an ingot, you need more. So we need a lot of metal. Uh, the crucible was very f conveniently uh, hacked from an oxygen tank, you know, uh, when you're when, uh, from a soldering torch. This is very easy to find, very cheap and very strong. It's made of steel, very thick steel, so it doesn't melt easily. The, there is a problem, uh, I, I'll just tell you now because it's about this point. The steel crucible will have problems with aluminium uh, because the steel from the crucible will melt with the molten aluminium. And this is not good for the purity of the metal. Uh, one thing we learned from the web and rediscovered by ourselves is that we need to add some salt uh, into the aluminium to improve uh, its, uh, the solubility of um, impurities and to, to get a, a very clean metal. Without this, uh, there is a lot of dirt on the surface and this causes a lot of problems where we try to, to pour this molten metal in the mold. So here is a cheap uh, metal supply. These are hard disks. These are very old uh, single gigabyte hard disks. And after recycling them, uh, we will get uh, strong magnets and empty cases. And the empty cases were used as a source of cheap aluminium. And the paint is not a problem because it will uh, go away very quickly. Um, a source of metal easy to find is um, recycling centers because they gather some metal and sort it in different uh, qual qualities and kinds. Uh, and we were able to trade this uh, very nice quantity of brass for uh, electronic cards. The recycling business is very active <laughs> in some part of France. <laughs> so this is the start of the serious melting operation. And now Tom will relay me to present you the next part. Okay. <coughs> uh, this is um, the, the process of uh, melting aluminum. So you can see here how push this okay here <laughs> you can see here the salt so uh, this is really really important important because uh, there is a lot of oxide in the surface of uh, li liquid aluminum and uh, the salt melts at uh, 500 degrees approximately it uh, covers the top of the metal, it dissolves the dioxides, and uh, it prevents uh, oxide oxidizing by, uh, by ambient air. So uh, it, it improves the, the quality of the metal, you can see here. The metal is very uh, br brilliant or polished, I don't know the mm -hmm. right term. And um, here it's uh, just the pre-eating of the, of the mold for the ingot because aluminum can react uh, violent, violently with uh, water. Uh, here is the making of, uh, of uh, ingots uh, in, the, in the second furnace. So you can see here leaks of uh, flame. And, and uh, this, this is a real prob problem in, uh, in our first uh, models because uh, there is a lot of loss and uh, um, the efficiency is, uh, is very bad, uh, about 20%, so we need a, a re really high power to, to hit the, the crucible. And the uh, gas bottle freeze uh, in about uh, 45 minutes. Yes, and the uh, gas bottle freezes because of the quantity of gas we get outside of this uh, bottle. And uh, we cannot uh, any further have uh, power in the, in the furnace. Uh, we tried to cast uh, by different method. Uh, we we first make ingots to have uh, prepared metal in a specific volume. Uh, we have two different methods of casting. And the first is the uh, lost lost form or lost PLA uh, method, and the second is sun casting, which is uh, an industrial pro process uh, uh, used. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, 
I will speak about last, uh, last form or, or PLA. Uh, it works. Uh, you can see uh, in, in the web it's used to make uh, very big machines when you have uh, a really high cost for, uh, for the model. Uh, it's um, it's uh, it uses uh, cheap uh, cheap refractory materials, but it have it have a really high problem because the model is very long to make, the mold is long to make, and the, the mold is not uh, reusable. It will destroy the mold after. So uh, it's a good process for complex parts, but not for simple parts. Uh, we need to preheat to eliminate uh, water, as, as usual, and um, I said the uh, mold is uh, last. Here it is. Uh, there is the, the first uh, try we made with uh, styrofoam. Uh, so we made a part, you can see here, with um, a, liter, a letter here and, and letters here, re relief here. Uh, we just uh, pour um, refractory concrete around and we pour metal after. And we have a very good uh, surface in, uh, in, in the output. The second try is a lost PLA test. The PLA is a material used in 3D, 3D printing. So uh, we tried with um, aluminum and uh, brass. And it works not very well because we don't have uh, improved uh, the process, but would be uh, a very good uh, way to, to make complex parts. You can see the, um, the surface, the surface uh, quality by, uh, by molding uh, PLA, PLA parts. The second method is uh, sand casting. It's uh, an in industrial uh, well-known uh, process. Um, we use uh, green sand uh, and in the first time, we, we tried to, to make our, f our, first, uh, our, our own um, sand because uh, it's uh, not very easy to find in France. Uh, so we tried a uh, different kind of sand uh, using, uh, as solid materials, uh, shore sand. It's a problem because the shore sand is, uh, con contains salt, and salt is, uh, is um, an element which reacts with the, with, with the metal. Uh, the second is a mortar sand. It's uh, better because it don't contain uh, salt. Bentonite clay and uh, wood dust. We tried with wood dust. Wood dust it, uh, increased the, the quality of the the, um, the porosity. Uh, porosity. Uh, porosity. <laughs> so the gas can escape. Uh, <coughs> the, the, the gases yeah. have to to get out of the. Um, of the mold, because uh, if you have a bubble, you will have a hole in your part. In your part. Uh, and the uh, liquid uh, parts of, of this, uh, this sand uh, is usually water, man, but uh, you can uh, also use uh, motor oil. We use uh, graphite oil, because it, uh, it increases the, the, surf the surface quality. We tried also PVC glue, it works, and acetone. <laughs> Uh, the best composition we, we ever had is 92% uh, of mortar sand, 8% uh, of uh, bentonite clay, and uh, water. Uh, we add, we don't quantify the, the water. We try to have the the right uh, cohesion. Hmm? We, we try to get the best cohesion as we could, yes. so that the sand was not <coughs> too uh, wet. But mm, we, we required a certain uh, strength uh, mm. more. Uh. Uh, we also make um, a chemical sand. It's useful to make uh, cores. The cores is a part you add in the mold to have a, a hole in the part. Uh, we have uh, found um, the recipe on the internet. We had um, sand and uh, Sodium silicate, it's a, a chemical compound, really difficult to find in France, especially in Paris. But we found it, and uh, it, works, it works really well. Uh, the process is just uh, compacting the sand in, the, in a negative mold to have the, the core, and uh, adding CO2 to harden the, the sand, the chemical sand. 
There is a, a successful part we made in the first uh, the first time when we received the real uh, real foundry uh, sand green sand, and uh, it, it was uh, useful to make uh, a uh, handle. Handle. <laughs> um, we uh, uh, acquired an, uh, a lot of experience about the whole processes because uh, we tried uh, almost everything we can. <laughs> And uh, we can um, build some something uh, usable for for our our members. Uh, we we want to say by by this, uh, we we try to to install a process of uh, metal 3D, 3D printing. We want to print models with a 3D printer and make uh, the the part by using metal. Uh, we work actu actually on, um, on a big furnace. Uh, we received a, a carbon. This is. Um, how do you say? <laughs> yes, silicon carbide. carbide yes. yes, sorry. Uh, we received the silicon carbide uh, crucible, uh, a very big one, 10 liters in volume. Uh, but it cannot be used uh, to melt iron because uh, silicon carbide is a is a, um, yeah, a reagent for soluble. Oh, the, 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 car the silicon carbide can dissolve in it will dissolve in in, uh, in, in the iron. Uh, we in, in the first time we we wanted to make uh, this uh, furnace by using a, a 13 kilogram standard gas tank, but uh, the um, the supplier give the give us the dimen the dimension, uh, but the dimension of the crucible was not in the outside but in the inside. It was an error of the uh, of the supplier, and the result is the. Um, the crucible don't fit in the gas tank, so we need to use a water heater to to make this uh, this furnace. Uh, we just uh, have a source to 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 have yeah. it. Uh, we also need a steel frame to rotate the assembly because uh, the the crucible will uh, have a weight about uh, 80 kilograms. It's uh, really dangerous to manipulate a, a crucible of this weight. Uh, at uh, 1,500 degrees, <laughs> so we need to rotate the furnace to pour the metal in the mold. Um, it's a work in progress, so we have actually no uh, no results for this uh, this furnace, but we are working on a prototype which is uh, outside. Uh, here, the crucible. You can see the scale with the beer <laughs> on the side. Um, and um, this is uh, our um, our goal is uh, to melt 10 liter of cast iron in uh, within 10 minutes. So we need uh, 750,000 watts of uh, thermal power. Uh, the the energy required to to melt with uh, a perfect. Um, if you just um, take into account the <coughs> heating of the iron and melting it to its uh, melting point, you just you already need 100 kilowatts, and the rest is required for the whole assembly and to keep uh, the metal molten. Because we have a lot of leaks, we have a very bad uh, uh, efficiency on, a, on a, a furnace like this. Uh, we also need a very big. Uh, fan to add air inside the, the combustion chamber. So it will be a kind of turbine. So we 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 have think about the the power source and um, gas is not uh, enough enough powerful to to heat uh, a crucible like this because uh, a gas bottle will freeze uh, instantly uh, and we have we will have no no power. So we will need uh, to add the uh, oil. It's uh, the prototype outside. Um, so we 
we have to do something right. about um, <laughs> the heating source, and then we decide to use a hybrid system with mm. both gas and oil. So the idea is that the gas will preheat the tank, and then we will inject oil into a Waste oil. hot from uh, Waste oil because yeah. uh, for uh, economical uh, reasons. The oil has a very high uh, energy density compared to gaseous uh, butane mm. or propane. We will need a uh, liquid butane uh, or liquid propane. Mm. Uh, it's quite difficult. <laughs> so we are working on the nozzle design to, to burn oil and uh, the pump also. Uh, there is the first test uh, on the hybrid uh, injector. So you can see here uh, the gas combustion. It's a mixing between uh, compressed air and uh, butane. And uh, it is supposed to preheat the oil at the outflow of the, um, of the, in the injector. What's important here is the gas is having a swirl. Yes. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's actually focused and expanding. <laughs> And then the oil will be injected in a very thin uh, line uh, inside this um, spinning gas. And this, is, this will improve the, the burn mm. by atomizing the, the oil jet. We have also a high pressure pump, but uh, we are not able to, to start it correctly at, at this time, at this moment. This is the actual burner. Um, an injector is a really, really complicated uh, thing to make, so we bought it in a, in a, a, in a hardware uh, store. <laughs> yes, uh, and uh, I have to make the the gas injector ar around and uh, the part which uh, maintain this in the air, air tu tube to to burn in the center of the tube. And so to get everything mm. in position, uh, this uh, injector is inside an air stream, forced air stream. So we need to have air around this uh, to... To cool down. Yeah, to cool down and to, yeah, to enter the, the, the furnace, just entering the furnace. Mm. That's why you see this uh, very nice part. The, the goal of this part, previous part, yeah. is uh, very important. We didn't just add the raw, um, very simple things. Uh, we want to keep a very laminar flow uh, yes. inside this tube, so that's why the design looks like uh, an airplane uh, mm. wing. An <laughs> airfoil. Um, the hybrid burn test, uh, for the, the hybrid this burn line. test, we needed a pump which can uh, get up to 10 bars of pressure. But uh, we didn't have the, the pump, so we reused uh, um, an old project of uh, Jordi, which is not here today. Uh, he worked on the, an extruder of, uh, for, for wax, because we wanted to, pre to 3D print a wax part to mold them after, because wax is really easy to, to melt, and uh, the part will, uh, will make a gap which we can fill with, uh, with metal. Yeah, actually, this is an unreleased project. We didn't want to talk about this now. <laughs> but uh, since uh, we, we have to pay a tribute to Jordi for starting this whole project, we presented his work uh, in this slide. <laughs> because he, made a lo he spent a lot of time uh, getting this together and to get the proper settings to create uh, a wax filament. So this machine is just uh, a, a tank with a, a resistance, a heat resistance. We add oil in the filter here, in the tank, by a vacuum. Uh, and after, we had uh, compressed air by uh, this tube. And uh, we have pressure uh, on, the, on the electrovan here. So we can inject uh, high uh, temperature uh, waste oil, because oil is very, uh, very sick, very um, viscous. viscous. And uh, we need to, to get the temperature up to 110 degrees to, to inject it in the, in the burner. So this machine is just uh, the, um, the equivalent of a, a, a pump, because we don't have the pump right now. We use, uh, we use this machine. Uh, the future evolutions of uh, this project is uh, first, first of all, we want to make a heat ex exchanger because uh, we want to, to slow down the, the heat losses in the, in the furnace. 
and uh, ha and have a uh, best uh, efficiency and uh, a thermal efficiency. Uh, we want also, but it's uh, uh, it won't be possible yet. But that's an idea yeah, we have. It's not possible yet. We we did we didn't have any test on this, but we want to convert iron to steel by injecting uh, oxi uh, pure oxygen in the metal, and uh, we will use um, uh, oxygen uh, probes to to measure the, the the quantity of carbon we eliminate in the metal. So we can uh, we can adjust the the, the percentage, percentage of carbon inside the metal. Uh, we will need the uh, instrumentation almost everywhere everywhere because of the size of the crucible and the sp for, sa for safety reasons and um, for documentation purposes. Because as you saw here, there are a lot there are not a lot of numbers in this presentation <laughs> because we need to get everything uh, on paper and calculation. <laughs> Uh, very precisely, but we are we have a very empirical approach to uh, to this project for the moment. Um, we want also to try different uh, method, material, processes, fuels to to improve our our project. And uh, we want also uh, a clean furnace because uh, we when we burn oil, there is a lot of smoke. And we have to filter this uh, this smoke to prevent pollution uh, outside of the lab. <laughs> so thank you for your attention on, on this uh, subject. Uh, if you have uh, some question about the the project, uh, please ask. We are here for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a question later, you can uh, you can here is talk to join us. You can see the um, the wiki. Or you can uh, email us, me and, uh, and Sebastian. And Jordi. And Jordi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or uh, Electrolab. So if you have hackerspace specific question, you can ask the Electrolab directly. So maybe we forgot some details. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, are there any questions? Uh, you say you're going to use uh, recycled oil. I'm guessing that's cooking oil that's being recycled. Um, mm -hmm. Are you you treating that in a way, or like filtering it, or getting the water content out of it, or just getting we it pure in there? We will filter um, the the oil by. Um, <laughs> yeah, we want to use sintered filters. Yes. Uh, this is a porous material that we filter out uh, impurities. And I, I, I have to admit, for the moment, we have no idea exactly how we will do that, but uh, we, we feel uh, something will be required. It, it works without filtering, but it will, uh, we feel it will be better. Any other question? Uh, are you going to try with uh, induction heating? Uh, uh, it's ongoing by uh, Jordi. It, he works on an uh, indu induction uh, furnace, but it's complicated to <laughs> to w to make work a uh, uh, big furnace with uh, induction. Yeah, hmm. the problem is high power with induction. Hmm. You need water cooling, very large transistors, capacitors, and a very very precise design and an expensive contract with uh, the electricity company. Says <laughs> <laughs> <No way. laughs> <laughs> the administration council. Anyone else? Just two questions. Have you tried the solar furnace and the um, um, mineral with carbon, which has a higher heat capacity, I believe? We didn't try solar power yet. No. no just no. <laughs> Maybe later. That's a good idea to get clean power and clean heat, I think. Um, in the south of France, there is a very big uh, solar furnace uh, that creates very, very interesting experiments. Uh, and maybe it could be an aspiration to do something about this. Thank you for reminding us this idea. <laughs> Any other question? 
Okay, if that's not the case, then thanks. Thanks, you too. Thanks. You're welcome.